welcome back to Reborn With Me. Today we're going to talk about veining. Veining is the process of painting little blue veins on the doll to make it look more and more like a real baby. Before we start painting, there's a few things that I need to tell you. The first thing is that veining is staining. It rhymes, so it must be true. As we were saying in the base coat video, the blue pigments have a really strong tendency to absorb into the vinyl and create staining. So the paint becomes immovable, it becomes very dark, it's a headache to work with. So at a minimum, make sure you have a base coat in place before you paint your veins. As much as possible, avoid painting veins on just the naked vinyl. The second thing that I need to tell you is that you're going to think of your veins as gradients and not lines. When I first started reborning, I had a tendency to draw very fine, very dark veins on the doll, and that just didn't look natural. You want to think of your veins more as shading patterns, less as defined little lines that are going to be on the doll. If you're doing capillaries, by contrast, those are fine little lines and they're extremely tiny. But for veins, these are larger areas that you want to look a little more subtle. The third thing I need to tell you is to keep it squiggly. So as you're painting your veins, avoid as much as possible Drawing straight lines is, is very tempting to draw straight lines and when you look at your own veins you might even feel like in spots you are getting straight lines but it looks really funny on the doll so as much as possible try to squiggle your lines and then as they're blending in with the rest of the painting it's going to look a lot nicer. And the last thing that I need to tell you is trees have branches. Trees have branches. What in the world does that have to do with veining? This is a mantra that I say to myself actually while I'm painting veins. So it's very tempting when you're veining to just draw parallel line patterns or lines that don't seem to be going in any particular direction. But veins are like trees or they're like roots. They, they branch off from one another so you may start with one major vein and then have several little veins that branch from that. So thinking about it as a branching pattern is going to give you a far more natural look than if you're just painting with veins willy-nilly. So I know it seems obvious, but I really do repeat this to myself when I'm painting. They, trees have branches. Trees have branches. And that will help me to create patterns that make sense and look natural on the veins. So, with those four points in mind, let's get to painting. In order to paint the veins, the only color I use is the Bountiful Baby Premixed Vein Blue. You'll need a relatively clean paintbrush and odorless paint thinner. I'm going to use one of the smaller wells for this because I'm actually, I don't know, I don't need a whole lot of paint and I don't need a whole lot of color for this. I'm just going to get a little bit of the paint on the brush and very gradually mix that into the well. I want a very translucent color for my veins. So I can just, just barely see them on the vinyl. Um, one thing that I do that's different is I add my veins in layers. So in a lot of tutorials, veining is kind of a one and done step. Because it's so difficult to see how much color you actually deposited on the doll, I like to do my veins in several layers. So I'll add a layer of veins, let it dry, Go back and look at it. If it's a little too light, I'll add some more until I get it the way that I want it to look. Okay, I'm going to start with this fully cured, fully dried limb. This limb has a base coat on it and four mottling layers. <clears throat> and now on top of that mottling layer, we're going to add veins. If you do blue mottling, you don't necessarily need to add veins, but I miss them when I don't do them, so I always add the veins as well. Because this is so translucent, we'll have to keep mixing it as we go because the paint will have a tendency to fall to the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to get just enough on my brush and I'm going to very lightly paint this sort of a V shape on the ankle. 
Okay, so you can see that because it's shiny. I'm gonna take a clean sponge and feather out the ends. So we want them to very gradually fade back into the rest of the skin tone. I like to make that same, I guess it's not really a V, it's more of an upside down Y, right? So I'm gonna do the same shape on the other ankle. Now the foot's kind of at an angle here, um, posing wise, so I'm gonna to try to make sure my vein shape corresponds to that. We'll do a little something like that. And again, I'm gonna take a sponge and drag away the ends. Veining to me looks the best on the feet, so I actually spend a lot of time painting the feet. So what I like to see, or at least what I notice on my own feet, is a lot of little V's along the sole. So I'll actually mimic those on my doll. And the most vein part of the sole is right in the arch. So remember, trees have branches, so I'm gonna take those V's I just made and branch from them into that arch area. I like to see a little bit of veining on the heel as well. And I'm just gonna feather out these ends a little bit. Now, as you can see, the vein we painted first has already kind of disappeared, so it has dried. I can see it, you probably can't. I'm gonna go back over it one more time because it is a little bit lighter, but I'm not gonna go over the whole thing, just that branching area. So there's certain parts of the veins that are darker than others, and I'm able to create that differentiation in how many layers I do. I just like to see a little bit around these toes. And I don't know if this is unique to my feet, but when I look at my own feet, I have one big vein that kind of branches across the front. It's really noticeable depending on what kind of shoes I'm wearing. And then it sort of branches off in other places. So I like to replicate that on my dolls because that's the way the veins look on me. And I think it looks nice on the dolls. So going over these ankle veins again. Um, because this doll is so heavily creased, the paint is gonna have a tendency to land in that crease and bleed. So as you can see here, the paint has gotten into the crease and kind of taken off. So this is where the pointy Q-tips come in again to absorb that paint that's gone beyond where we wanted it. So there's my veined foot. Another place you might want to vein is the thighs, maybe more of a web pattern. This would be an area that I wouldn't do multiple layers of veins because it looks better when it's more subtle. So just to demonstrate if you wanted to do more of a web pattern, so we still want our squiggly lines. We're still gonna follow the trees have branches principle. And we're just gonna make one really well, maybe like two really big branches and actually connect them to one another. And this is a pattern that looks very nice if you have a belly plate. It looks really nice in the chest area and the top of the stomach. So you don't want it to be too much like a grid. You want it to be random. But maybe something like that. And we're gonna take that sponge and drag out those ends because you don't want to see a very defined stopping point where the veins end. You want them to kind of fade in and out of visibility. Okay, so maybe we wanna do the feet and the thighs and let the rest of it go. I'm gonna let this dry, paint all, vein all my other pieces, and then we'll come back and inspect this and see if we need to add or remove okay, color. I wanna give you guidelines for a hand pattern and again, you can do this. What I do as well is I just use myself for reference. 
So I'm a pretty veiny person, um, which works in my favor when I'm reborning. So I always notice that there's one very heavy vein that runs up the middle of my hand and fades out as you go down my arm and then is really noticeable veining right in this thumb area. So those are the areas I will emphasize with the veins and then maybe just make the others less noticeable. So I'm gonna put my glove back on and we're gonna replicate that on the doll. Okay, and this one's balled in a cute little fist. So that's gonna change our pattern a little bit. So I like to add the most color right down the middle. And then maybe you wanna branch it off a little bit just for fun. Okay, and then there's kind of a pattern here on the thumbs that I like to pick up. I just do little Y's. You can do any pattern that you like. And then this is gonna be a little hard to get to, but I want some veins right in the palm as well, because it's gonna look very nice on the doll. So that is the pattern that I like to do on my hands and wrist. If it's looking too dark, if it's picking up, if it's dragging out into the creases, you can always use the Q-tip to soak that up and dab it to your liking. On the top of the hand, I like to use the Trees Have Branches principle, and I'm also very veined on the top of my hands. But you can most easily see veins that are going into each of the fingers. So you create this sort of a Y pattern from the fingers, and then there's usually one major vein that runs down the rest of the arm. So it's more or less one, you know, this is sort of the base of the tree, and then the branches go outward. And if you want to be fancy, you can continue to branch those out up into the fingers. Really a matter of preference. And always be sure to make sure it's not getting in the creases and drag out the tips so that they blend seamlessly into the rest of the doll. Another thing that I wanted to mention about the vein patterning, so there are a lot of places you can look for ideas. Um, the best place would probably be photos. Resist the temptation to look at medical photos, like medical diagrams from a science textbook, because you don't want to paint the veins where they are, you want to paint the veins where they're visible. So if you get any kind of vein diagram that's intended for scientific or medical purposes, they're going to show you way more veins than is appropriate to paint on the doll. So looking at pictures is always a good place to start. I always look at myself. I'm an extremely veined person. Um, I'm golden complexion and my veins are bright green on my skin. So they're very easy to find um, and very easy to replicate. There are also tutorials out there, so the Secrets Company and some other folks will give you precise diagrams on where to put your veins. Those are definitely um, worth checking out if you feel like you're having trouble placing the veins. Um, but try to make it your own too. You don't want the dolls to be too cookie cutter, so that's my only hesitation with getting the, the reborning veining tutorials. Okay, so now I'm on the head. Um, I don't like seeing a lot of veining on the face. As you know, I'm a very light-handed painter. I love seeing them on the scalp, though. Okay, so trees have branches on the head. Because I love being able to see veins under the hair, I do them a little bit thicker and a little darker than I normally would. And I just draw them coming out from the crown. So I'll start off with the base of my tree trunk at the crown and branch it off into larger branches that turn into smaller branches and thinner branches as you approach the forehead. Okay, for most babies there is, and some grown people actually, a vein that runs right across the forehead. So I'm going to build that right into the pattern that I started and run that backwards. Another place on the face where it's good to see veins is in the temple. And I like to have just two branches in the temple. And if it's a very young baby, like a preemie, or if I'm trying to create that fresh from the womb look on a newborn, I'll really emphasize the veins in this, in this area of the face. So maybe I'll branch it out just a little bit, just for fun, but I don't want it too, too bright. Okay, that's kind of neat. 
Same deal on the other side. Okay, I'm going to get right into this temple area with sort of a tiny branch. And notice these lines are squiggly, squiggly. They are not straight. Drawing any straight lines on your doll's face is going to be very noticeable in a way that's not good. So keep them squiggly, keep them light. Add color as you go. Okay, so those are my face veins. And then I'm going to just continue the branching pattern into the scalp. To me, there's really no particular place that I put them. I make them nice and big and wide because I do want them to be seen. Um, if I'm going to do a bald baby, I'll probably make them more subtle. But I'll still definitely want to see some veins branching out on the head. So I guess one takeaway from all of these videos is if you are the owner of one of my baby dolls, um, all the excitement's on the scalp. So <laughs> look there if you want to see all of the, the fancy stuff because I try to keep my faces really as clean as possible. Now, another thing you can do at this point is what I like to call blue shading. And I use the same color that I use for the veining. Um, so earlier I was saying that sometimes people paint blue inside the head around the eye sockets. That's fine. It's hard to get it right. If it's too dark, you're going to get kind of a raccoon look on the doll. Um, that is going to work against what you're trying to do. So I like to capture that shading with my vein blue color right on top of the mottling at the same time that I'm doing the veins. So what I'm going to do is right in this area around the eye, I'm going to add a little bit of shading. And for this part, because I, it's a shading area, I'm going to use a mop to spread that stuff around. I'm going to very gradually add color. You might want to take it right across the bridge of the nose, depending on the age of the doll and the look you're trying to create. I just like to get right in the corners here. Wow, that was a hair. Okay. So it looks very nice. And I'm using that to feather it out and spread it around. So you can probably just barely see what I did. I can see it quite well and it looks nice. Another place you might want to see this is around the corners of the nose and kind of going down to the mouth. Um, and this mop's actually a little too frayed for this, so I'm going to find another brush really quick. You want something that has soft bristles, but isn't too fat. So let's give this one a try. Yeah, that's pretty good. And again, the idea is to blend it in with the area around it. Um, even after you've blended it, it's going to be tempting to keep adding on top of it. I highly suggest that you set it aside and let it dry for a little while because it is going to look different once it's dried. I kind of want to see some in this chin area as well. So I'm going to get that and blend it around. So basically anywhere where you want to see extra blue on the doll, that's what the shading layer takes care of. It looks pretty nice in the thinner parts of the ears as well, but we are going to put our um, creasing color there too. So we're going to drag this more out of the crease to get that nice blue gradient. So yeah, like I said, anywhere you think this is appropriate, you can do the blue shading. I'm actually going to come back after the veining and do another blue shading layer on top of where I veined to further create that gradient. So we'll see more of that later. By now, the limb that we started with has dried. I don't know if you can see this at all, but I can see the veining. It's very faint and very nice. So there are a few spots where I want to add a little bit more color. So I'm going to take my brush, get some paint. I'm going to blot it out on the towel a little bit because this time I don't want it juicy. I don't want to disturb anything that's under this layer. And I'm just going to very lightly paint over the sections or over the veins that I want a little bit darker. 
for me is always this uh, arch of the foot area, like seeing lots of veins there. The goal is not to paint over all of the veins, just the parts that you want to be darker than others. And we'll let that dry, come back and inspect it again before we put it in so the So at this point, I've now done two coats of paint on the veins. So I painted the veins the first time, then I went back and added some highlighting to certain parts of the veins because veins are darker in areas than they are in others. And what I have now is I, I just barely can see this pattern. I'll take some stills for you as well in case it's not coming through in the video. So I, I like the vein pattern that I'm seeing in the sole um, as well as around the toes. You hardly can make it out on the thighs and that was indeed the goal. So this is looking nice to me. Um, I'm not feeling like I need to add more to it. So we're going to go ahead and bake these parts with the veining for nine minutes, eight to nine minutes at 250, 60% power in the new wave oven. Once the veins have cooled and dried, well cooled and cured and cooled, we'll be able to move on to what I call the blue shading layer. So thanks for veining with me. Be sure to check out the tutorials on my blog for additional pictures and I uh, hope you're having fun. I'll see you next time.